Right, unit 5, page 86. Let me just zoom in for you. Okay, reading 1. A super soccer fan. You are going to read an article by a soccer fan from Brazil. Use the article to gather information and ideas for your unit assignment. Okay, we're going to look at the first um, exercise. Exercise A, preview the reading. Vocabulary. Here are some words from reading 1. Read the sentences, then write each underlined word next to the correct definition. Now, this is a kind of exercise that we have started all of the previous units with. Um, so, basically, what you will do is you will take this underlined word, right, from each sentence, and then you will match them to the correct definition. Right, let's turn over to the next page. I'll be looking at page 87. Exercise C, preview, skim the article, answer the questions. Right, number one, what is the title? You can write the title name here. Um, number two, who is the author? Number three, what is the article about? Number four, what is the name of the team in the photos? Exercise D, quick write. What do sports fans do to show support for their favorite team? Write a list. Remember to use this section for your unit assignment. Right, the next one, work with the reading. Exercise A, read the article and gather information about how sports make you feel. So basically what you are going to do is you are going to read this article, a super soccer fan. And this article is going to have all of the information that you need in order to answer all of the previous questions. Right, let's turn over to the next page, page 88. As you can see, the article continues on this page. Right, we will look below the article now to exercise B. Circle the answer that best completes each statement. So basically, you are going to read each statement and then you are going to circle the alphabet next to the correct answer. Right, let's turn over to the next page, page 89. Exercise C. What do you know about Fernando Mendez? Where is the information in the reading? Check the statements you know to be true and write the paragraph number. <coughs> so basically, what you are going to do what do you know? You are going to put a check or a tick in the correct block and then you are going to write the number of the paragraph here. So as you can see, the first one is done for you, number one. They have put a check or a tick over here in the block. And then on this side, under paragraph, they have written number one, which indicates that this information comes from the first paragraph. Right, let us move on below this. Exercise D. The following statements are not true. Change one word in each statement to make it true. So all of these statements are false. They are not true. You need to change one word in each one in order to make it true. Right, let's turn over to the next page, page 90. Right, I will zoom in for you. Right, so exercise E, look back at your quick write on page 87. What do soccer fans do? Add any new information you learned from the reading. So exercise F, circle the answer that best completes the statement. Then do step 2. Right, so in this particular question, you are going to circle the correct answer that completes the statement. And then you are going to do step 2. Step 2 is... List details from the article and from experiences in your country to explain your answer. Right, we're going to look at G, exercise G. What do you think? Where, why does Fernando like the Corinthians so much? How does watching soccer make him feel? So obviously this is the name of the soccer team, Corinthians, right? And this is the name of the guy, Fernando, from the article. So you are going to uh, read this question. And obviously, you are going to take your information from the article. Right below this, write what you think. 
A. Discuss the questions in a group. Now, obviously, this is an exercise that you do not need uh, to be in a group. You can do this by yourself. Number one, are you a big sports fan? Why or why not? Number two, why do you think people like to be fans of one team? Number three, what is a popular team in your city? What do fans of this team do? What do they wear? So obviously, I mean, many countries or many cities, when there is a football team or any sports team, uh, people do certain things to show that they support a, sec uh, a certain team. So you are going to write your answers. Um, exercise B, choose one of the questions from activity A and write a response. Look back at your quick write on page 87 as you think about what you learned. So the question number, you're going to write it here. Your response, you are going to write it here. All right, let's turn over to the next page, page 91. <clears throat> now, on page 91, we have your reading skill, identifying supporting sentences and details. When you read a paragraph, it's important to understand how the writer supports the main idea. Good readers learn to look for the supporting sentences and details. Supporting sentences. After you find the main idea or topic sentence in a paragraph, look for the supporting sentences. These sentences explain more about the topic sentence. The bold sentences below support the idea expressed in the topic sentence. Right, so this is the example they give you. In the example, they have written in bold what is important, the supporting sentences. Right, details. A supporting sentence often includes or is followed by one or more details. In the example paragraph below, the details come after the supporting sentences. The details give additional information about the supporting sentences. Each detail explains what happens at the game. So once again, this is the example. Uh, the supporting sentences are written in bold. Right, to have a better understanding, I would suggest that you read this one more time before you complete any activity based on it. Right, let us move on below. Exercise A. Read these sentences from paragraph 3 of reading 1. Write the type of sentence for each. Now, if it is a topic sentence, you are going to write TS. If it is a supporting sentence, you are going to write SS. And if it is a detail, you are just going to write D. Right, so these are the sentences. And this is the place where you will write the alphabets that you have chosen. Right, let's move on. The next page, page 92. Let me just zoom in for you. Right, so exercise B. Write these sentences from paragraphs 4 and 5 of reading 1. Write each type of sentence in the chart. Note the sentences are not in order. <coughs> so also once again, you need to remember that these sentences are not in order. Right, That's something very important. And once again, for the correct answer, topic sentence, you will write TS. Supporting sentence, you will write SS. And for detail, you will write D. Right, and then we're going to move on to the next page. Right, so the next page, page 93, it is reading number two, the history of soccer. You are going to read a website about the history of soccer. Use the website to gather information and ideas for your unit assignment. So preview the reading. A, vocabulary. Here are some words from reading two. Read their definitions, then complete each sentence. So once again, this is the vocabulary, right? This is the definition. You are going to use this vocabulary to complete each one of these sentences. Right, let us move on to the next page, page 94. I will zoom in for you now. Right, so we're looking at exercise C. It says preview, look at the headings and captions on the website. How does the website describe soccer? So you are going to choose one answer. You will put a check in the correct block. 
Exercise D, quick write. What do you know about the history of soccer? Write a few sentences. Remember to use this section for your unit assignment. Okay, exercise A, work with the reading. So this is the reading that is uh, based on the website. Right, so basically it says, exercise A, read the website and gather information about how sports make you feel. So you are going to read this article, The History of Soccer. Um, it starts at the bottom of page 94, continues to the top of page 95. And then we're going to look at the bottom of page 95, exercise B. Write TS next to the topic sentences and SS next to the supporting sentences. Right, so there's paragraph 1, paragraph 4. According to how you feel about each sentence, you are going to write TS or you are going to write SS. Once again, a reminder, SS stands for supporting sentence. Let me turn over to the next page, page 96. Now, as you can see, paragraph 5, 6 and 7, you are going to do the same. For the correct answer, you are going to write either TS or SS next to each sentence. Right, we will move on to exercise C, read the sentences, then number the events from number 1 to number 5. So in this particular exercise, what you need to do is you need to number each sentence in order from number 1 to number 5. The best way to do this exercise is to read all of the information first and then decide which sentence comes first. And obviously you get the information from uh, the website reading on the previous pages. Exercise D, answer the questions. So you are just going to read the question and give an answer for it. Once again, your information for these questions are going to come from uh, the previous website reading, the history of soccer. Right, so we are going to turn over to the next page, page 97. Exercise A, write what you think. Discuss the questions in a group. Look back at your quick write on page 94 as you think about what you learned. Exercise B, think about the unit video, reading 1 and reading 2. As you discuss the questions, then choose one question and write a response. So you're going to choose one question. You're going to write the question number here and you are going to write your response. Right, let us turn over to the next page. Write the next page, which is the last page for this unit. Right, so this is your vocabulary skill. The prefix UN. A prefix is a letter or group of letters at the beginning of a word. A prefix changes the meaning of a word. You can build your vocabulary by using prefixes. Right, so this is basically an example. The prefix UN means not. It gives an adjective the opposite meaning. For example, familiar, the opposite would be unfamiliar. As you can see, we have taken UN and we have added it to the beginning of the adjective. UN, unfamiliar, which basically means not familiar. Only some adjectives can use the prefix UN. The example they give you, which is the word lucky, you can add the prefix UN to the beginning and the word changes to unlucky, which means not lucky. But you cannot use unfast, right? You cannot put the prefix in front of this word. If you are unsure, check your dictionary before adding UN to an adjective. Now, once again, you can, if you do not have a uh, hard copy dictionary, you can always go online and you can actually Google and see words that work with prefixes. You can actually Google that. Right, so we're going to go to the last the last two exercises. Exercise A, only some of these words can use UN as a prefix. Look in the dictionary and find the words that use UN. Write the word with its prefix on the line. Write not plus word for the words for the other words. So for example, the word board cannot use UN as a prefix. So we have written not board. 
Number two can use un as a prefix. So as you can see, friendly becomes unfriendly. And then the last exercise, exercise B, write five sentences, use adjectives from activity A, then read your sentences to a partner. Now, obviously, if you do not have a partner, it's perfectly fine. You can just read it to yourself and you can check it online to see if you have uh, done the sentences correctly. Right, so that wraps up unit five.